and welcome to another reading vlog. Um, it's been a while since I've recorded anything, so I have some books to talk about, um, some books I've read, am reading, and books I want to read um, for this month. So I recently finished Assassin's Quest, that's the first book I'm going to talk about. I, I got through this really slow, like I was reading this for like a lot of October and I like just recently finished it at the at the start of November. It's like November it's like November 16th today. So I just finished this a little while ago. Um I loved it. I gave I think I gave it five stars on Goodreads. Assassin's Quest is the last book in the Farseer trilogy, which is part of Robin Hobb's book series that all take place in this world called The Realm of the Elderlings. I've talked about this series a lot on my channel. Assassin's Quest was by far my favorite book um, in the Farseer trilogy. The books I've read so far in this series like kind of have a pattern where they're pretty slow. And then a lot happens in like the last third of the book, which I don't necessarily mind. I kind of like that it feels kind of slice of lifey at times. Um, and Assassin's Quest does kind of follow that pattern somewhat where I would say that the first third or so is a little bit slow, which might have to do with why I tend to get through these books so slowly. They're not exactly page turners. But with that said, even though not a lot happens in the first third or so of this book, I really enjoyed it. We spend the first portion of this book kind of just with Fitz and his wolf companion, which honestly I really liked their moments together. Um, I liked seeing Fitz be a stinky little wolf boy. Um, and then as we progress in this book, um, we get a little bit more of an ensemble cast. And like the title says, Assassin's Quest, it has more of a quest, like road trip, almost like Fellowship of the Ring, sort of vibe to it, um, and I had a lot of fun with it. had a lot of fun seeing Fitz interact with the different characters in this book, and like each of the characters that kind of accompany, accompany him on this journey um, get their own development and backstory, which is fun. Without spoiling it too much, I really like the way they handled the magic and the world building in this in this series, in this book specifically. I really like how it ended. It was a very satisfying ending to kind of what these past three books have been building up to. And I will be picking up the next trilogy that's part of the uh, Realm of the Elderling series, um, which is the Life Shift Traders, I believe. Um, I'll be getting to that soon after I talk about these next couple books I'm reading. I might be wrong, but I believe the Life Shift Traders series does not include the same characters in um, the first year trilogy, but it does take place in the same world. But I do believe there are future books in this grander series that involve uh, Fitz and the Fool, which I'm really excited to read. I'm predictable, but their relationship is one of my favorite things in this book series. But yeah, and then what I'm currently reading is Ilatso. This, this book wasn't super on my radar, but I had uh, placed a hold on it um, at the library because I saw it on Goodreads and it, it came in. so. I decided to give it a read. It's actually been sitting on my shelf for forever. Ilatso is a YA fantasy um, that takes place in an America similar to ours, but uh, there is magic involved. And we follow the main character, Ilatso, who's part of a Lipan Apache family. Um, and she is investigating the mysterious death of her cousin. I think it's all right so far. Um, I think I think coming off of Assassin's Quest, I don't love the writing style in this book. It feels a little bit simple, I guess. Um, but it is a YA fantasy, so that's probably why. And like tonally, it also feels like a little bit childish for me. I do like the magic and fantasy in the world so far. Um, it honestly kind of reminds me of Rainbow Roll's Carry On series, where it's like a very similar universe to our present day universe, but there's like, oh, like vampires and ghosts and stuff like that. But I do believe the author is Native American and the magic is viewed through a Native American lens. I'm halfway through, it's a pretty fast read and like, I'm not in love with it, but I'm hoping to get through it pretty fast, hopefully by like the end of this week. And then after I finish Ilatso, um, I have another book that came in for me at the library, and that's Beautiful World, uh, Where Are You? I usually don't go for a romance, but I really liked um, Sally Rooney's Normal People, so 
I think this is her latest book that came out somewhat recently um, and it came in this one seems to be about um, four characters who each have their own like breakups and whatnot going on um, so my plan is after you let so I'm gonna read this one and then I'm gonna go back to the first live shrimp traders book and yeah that's all I'm reading for now just just on the like life update side I never know if I should keep these to like just books or also talk about my life but like while I'm at it while I'm talking to the camera my job has really gone from like zero to a hundred these past few weeks um, I work in the animation industry uh, so I do art for my day job which is something I like to do a lot uh, but it's tiring especially when I'm sometimes working more than 40 hour weeks um, and unfortunately it just doesn't leave a lot of time and energy to engage in creative exploits outside of work like for instance I barely draw outside of work um, and editing these videos felt like a really nice creative outlet where it was kind of analogous to what I have a skill set in which is making you know media animated content yeah, I really enjoy editing but it's like a completely different thing from sitting down and drawing it's just like oh I can just record myself instead of having to draw everything um, and I can just quickly edit it together but even then yeah it's just it's just honestly hard to find the energy to do so and also like the amount of time that I have in a day to read has decreased um, so it's I'm just complaining now so it's, it's like hard to find a the time and energy to film and edit content and also like have like material to talk about because I'm not reading that much but I'm telling myself even if it's just a five minute video of me talking without any flourish to it like I can post that I still want to try to post at least something um, every month even if it's not the most polished or beautiful video you know what I mean um, but for all of you guys who are watching my videos and like liking commenting subscribing um, it really means a lot it, it feels nice to feel like this channel has like an audience that will listen to me blab about books because honestly I really like talking about the books I read to the camera um, but yeah thanks for watching um, and I'll see you in the next clip in the next video we'll see We'll see what happens, but bye! Welcome to my car. Um, today is Sunday, November 21st. I just got a massage and it was so nice. I like, this is my first time getting a massage in a few months. It's not something I do normally, but I've just been pretty stressed lately and I felt like it was something I needed, something I wanted to treat myself with, and it was so good. Life has been feeling a little bit non-stop lately between work and just life stuff and, you know, keeping up with being an adult. It's been stressful. It's been hard to feel like I've had huge blocks of time or like a day to myself to just sit and read and chill. Um, and so even though I'm out today, it feels really nice that I blocked out this time for myself. Oh, there's people walking by. I did bring a book with me. I was thinking of um, stopping by a cafe around here after my massage, but it's pretty hot and I still have some chores to do so I think I'm gonna head home but there was randomly like a farmer's market around here and I got some steam buns and some Thai tea for lunch um, and I have to run a couple errands and then I'm gonna head home but I'm hoping after errands and chores I can spend the rest of the day finishing a lazo and then I'll be moving on to either Piranesi or the new Sally Rooney book I got which the name escapes me right now but yeah I'll see you in the next clip. Bye.
uh, so it's the next day today. It's Monday the uh, 22nd. So I did sit down last night and I finished Ilatso um, and I have some thoughts on it. I think overall I would give it a 2.5. I didn't love it. I think as I mentioned before, I think the um, writing style felt a little young for me, which again, it's not the book's fault. It is a YA novel. I just wasn't in love with any of the characters. Um, I wasn't too impressed by the twists in the world. Basically, she's solving a mystery and it was a little bit straightforward, but with like a supernatural twist. And I did like the the magic supernatural aspects in this world, but it wasn't a page turner for me. And like, there's sometimes like kind of like jokes or like one-liners in, in this book that weren't really hitting for me. Um, but the things that I did like about Ilatso is that I really like the small town conspiracy aspect. I'm a big fan of that. Um, and I like the way that they tied bows on various like plot points or world building they set up um, throughout the book. Um, and like overall the ending was really satisfying. So overall I don't know if I would necessarily recommend this book, but I do think it's worth the read if you're into like YA urban fantasy. Um, and then... Just another quick TBR update. I picked up Piranesi. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it finally came in um, for me at the library. I had it on hold forever, and I feel like everyone I know has just read it, so I'm really excited. I'm actually saving it for my Thanksgiving break. This is my first year not going home for Thanksgiving, I think. Basically, I have two days off plus the weekend, so four days, and... I'm gonna take those four days um, to myself to stay here in LA in my apartment and just chill. I'm excited. I'm like definitely gonna get through all these books I got from the library and then hopefully start the first book of the Live Ship Traders. And yeah, I'm excited to just like chill out, veg out, and like read for four days hopefully, maybe watch something. But anyways, I'll be getting through this probably like Thursday, Friday. Super excited for that. And in the meantime, as I mentioned before, I um, started reading Beautiful World, Where Are You? Um, I'm not very far into it. I just started reading it last night. And okay, side, side tidbit. It's been a long time since I felt the joy of um, finishing a book and then picking up another one right away that same night. It's a really satisfying feeling. It makes me feel like, I wanna say it makes me feel productive, but that's not quite the right word. It's just like satisfying, like, oh, I completed something and I get to start the new thing. It's been nicer getting through these smaller books because I've been reading um, the Forest Year Trilogy books and like, I keep getting like the um, mass market pa paperback versions. And even though they're not, they don't seem that big, they're like, the like text in them is dense and like, and they're just thick books. It takes me like forever to get through them. So it's been nice to like um, feel the satisfaction of just like speeding through some smaller books and like picking up one after the other. But anyways, um, it's too soon to like form any solid opinions on this, but I like it so far. I would describe the writing style as coy. So earlier I said I don't like romance. I have an addendum to that. And something I really like about normal people that I think also exists in this book is that I like romance when it sets up that like characters have like years of history or something like that. Like I like it when it's two people with history and there's like, you know, that buildup and sexual tension from like years of pining or whatever like that. As opposed to like, I feel like most contemporary romance that I've read, which isn't a lot, um, tends to be more like, oh, two characters like have a meet cute and, and start a romance that way. But yeah, in this book we follow four characters and then there's this chapter near the beginning of the book where it just goes through like the history between them and kind of just like a neutral POV. And I think that's the chapter where it hooked me, where I like kind of got to wrap my brain around like, oh, like that's why this character is acting this way with this character and that's who this is. But yeah, that's it for now. Bye. Thanksgiving. 
Uh, I'm halfway through Beautiful World, Where Are You? And I'm so confused. There's like these two characters and I don't understand why they aren't in a relationship or like, are they in a relationship? I don't get it. Like, why aren't y'all together? It's like the same thing as normal people where I was like, did you guys just never have a like define the relationship conversation or what? I'm gonna finish it today and see what's up and then I'm gonna start Piranesi, but I'm really liking it so far. Hello! Today is Tuesday, November 30th, and I'm back with the reading updates from my Thanksgiving break. I was feeling really ambitious about how much I was going to read over the break. I wanted to read Beautiful World, Where Are You, Piranesi, and then start Ship of Magic. Um, unfortunately, I didn't read that much, but I did finish uh, Beautiful World, Where Are You, and I'm about halfway through Piranesi. So because I did finish Beautiful World, Where Are You? I'll talk about that first, about my, my general thoughts about it. I gave it 3.5 stars. Overall, it was a really fun read. It was kind of smutty. I was like pretty invested in what was happening and I, I got through it really fast. I mean, I'm sure being on break had something to do with that, but I do feel like it was kind of like a page turner. Like I wanted to know what was happening next, but at the same time, it was one of those books where like not a lot happens, if you know what I mean. Like there's a lot going on in the subtext, but it does feel kind of like slice of lifey. And yeah, so overall, like I had a good time reading it. And like the reason I gave it only a 3.5 was because it left me with a lot of like mixed feelings after I finished it. I think I mentioned this before, but in this book we follow four characters, Alice, Felix, Eileen, and Simon. And basically Alice and Felix are a couple and then Eileen and Simon are a couple and like Alice and Eileen are best friends. So this book explores both two romantic relationships as well as um, the friendship between the two girls. It's kind of just one of those books about like living life having relationships, having messy relationships, and like being in your like late 20s, early 30s, and the existentialism that comes with that. Like it was just so frustrating the way that the characters just like weren't talking to each other about their feelings and were like existing in these like romantic relationships without like communicating what they wanted. It was very confusing, but at the same time, relatable. I like the way it's written. Um, it alternates between like one chapter will kind of be in almost a neutral POV and then the next chapter will be from first person and it's either Alice or Eileen writing emails together. So like one chapter will be the events of what's happening and then the next chapter will be like Alice writing to Eileen about what happened in the previous chapter. And I think that's really cool. I wanted to share one line from the book that I really liked. Like overall the, the writing style I, I, I think is really pretty. And the line is, they looked at one another for a long moment without moving, without speaking, and in the soil of that look many years were buried. I think that's so pretty. And I like the pacing of the book. I like the way it kind of like builds up to something but you don't, like you know there's something there but you don't know what that something is and we slowly like reveal more and more information about the history that these characters have with each other throughout, throughout the book. And it builds up to the point where the ending kind of felt like watching a train wreck unfold. I just felt so frustrated to everyone. I feel like the um, resolution between the tension between Eileen and Alice. Like I feel like that friendship resolution was really satisfying to me in the end, but the resolutions in the two romantic relationships in this book, I I don't know if I like them. I had a lot of mixed feelings. Without spoiling anything, there's a certain event that's taking place in the last two chapters of this book that I like really wish wasn't there. I think I would have given this book like a solid four stars if the ending didn't kind of throw me off. I felt similarly to how I felt after normal people like overall I liked it, it hooked me, but I just felt like a little bit confused and almost unsatisfied at the end. But I do think I liked normal people more than beautiful world. Where are you? I feel like the kind of like a similar theme in both books is people living their lives and relationships and life is messy but good, which is like a theme that I can definitely get behind. And I think like reading this very like grounded in reality and real people problems was a nice break from all the fantasy I've been reading. I do recommend it and I will happily read more of Sally Rooney's books. I don't know what it is because like the two books I read, I'm like, I don't know how I feel about this ending, but I had an overall good time reading it. And then 
Moving on to Piranesi, I'm about halfway through. So a friend of mine, I think, mentioned that it's best to go into this book blind, which so far I highly agree with. Like, honestly, if you want to read this book, like, feel free to skip this section where I talk about Piranesi. I won't spoil anything, but yeah. So in this book, we follow Piranesi, who is a mysterious person living in a mysterious world that's full of halls and statues and water. The only people who inhabit this world are Piranesi and one other person who he refers to as the other. And Piranesi is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the reader only knows how much Piranesi knows. And we like slowly learn more about Piranesi and the world he's in as the book unfolds. It's also suggested that something is wrong. He maybe has memory issues, something happened, there's time missing. Throughout reading this book, I am definitely curious to find out what's going on in this world, um, why he's here. And being about halfway through, I do think a lot of things have been revealed and answered, but I still have a lot of questions. I really like the writing style overall, and I feel like this is like a fast read. I feel like it, you know, it hooks you. There's like a mystery element to it. The main character, Piranesi, I think is very like likable in the sense that you can tell he's very confused, but he's just trying his best and he's almost childlike and naive at times. There's one detail in the book that I read last night, um, which is that he likes to put seashells and things like that in his hair and he feels naked without them and I really liked that. Yeah, I'm probably gonna finish this over the next few days and then I'm gonna start at Ship of Magic, I think. But seeing as it is November 30th, um, I think I'm gonna wrap up this vlog for now. I've had a really good time getting through like a few more books this time around. I really want to keep up with this. Please expect another vlog coming for December. And always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please let me know if you've read any of these books and your thoughts on them, or just let me know what you're reading in the comments down below. Bye! Mm -hmm.